dun, 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 dun. Hey, 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 Mr. War here. Welcome to yet another math video. Oh, si prefieres un video de matemáticas. Hey, I'm just having some fun, you guys. It's a video, it's math. Aren't you guys excited? I am really pumped for this wonderful math video on area and mixed numbers. Ooh, yeah. Did I pique your interest just a little bit? I hope so. This is our focus. This is our topic. Ooh, I didn't get a pen. Come on, pen. I guess it's working slow. Still not going to give me a pen. There we go. Ooh, there. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at lesson 7.7 .7 on Go Math. And our essential question, as stated right here on the page, is... See if I can get connect. It didn't work for me. How can you use a unit tile to find the area of a rectangle with fractional side lengths? You can see how this is connected. We're looking at area, but we've been talking about unit fractions, and this sounds like fractions. Yes, it does. So let's go ahead and do the investigation. We will also be taking a look at, I don't think we'll be looking at all of these. We'll be looking at mathematical practice four which you may recall is about modeling with mathematics. We're also going to be looking at mathematical, mathematical practice six, a 10 to precision, and we'll take a look at those. Let's go ahead and get started here. Start off by reading the problem. It says here, you can use square tiles with side lengths that are unit fractions to find the area of a rectangle. It says Lee wants to cover the rectangular floor of her closet with tile. The flower, I mean a flower, the flower, sure. Let's bake some cookies. Just kidding. The floor is two and a half feet by three and a half feet. She wants to use the fewest, I have to underline that. Oh, not, more like a, a wave there. Surf's up, dude. Just kidding. Okay, so we're going to use the fewest tiles possible and doesn't want to cut any tiles. The tiles come in three sizes. Ooh, we have one by one. One foot by one foot. We have a half foot by half foot and a quarter foot by a quarter foot. It says choose the tile that Lee should use. What is the area of the closet floor? Look here, we have it right here. This is modeling with mathematics right here because that's what we're looking at. And I'm just going to quickly pull this up. It's just a reminder. Some of the ingredients here. Basically, we're going to solve math problems arising in everyday life. Was well, that not a problem in everyday life? modeling with mathematics look at that little uh i want to call him the stick guy but he's like a stick guy with <laughs> black paint inside of him anyways we're going to apply assumptions and approximations maybe when we want to take something to make a hard task like this let's make it simple we're going to use that we're going to use tools maybe diagrams tables those this is all about modeling with mathematics okay and i'll just make him disappear hopefully goodbye time to go Thank you. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Well, we need to find there's some key points here. Let's take a look at that. Because so we have to ask ourselves, first of all, is like, you know, how would I know, like, what would be best? That would, would a one by one, wouldn't that cover the whole floor? Would that not work? Um, or do we already know that a one by one is not going to work here in this problem? And when I'm looking at it one by one, since it only comes in this size and we can't cut, it says that Lee does not want to cut any of the tiles. You can see this isn't going to work because look at what we have here. We have two and a half feet by, uh, by three and a half feet right here. And wow, that was pretty cool. So the one's not going to work. Therefore, we're going to have to look at some of these other options here. The half foot or the quarter foot. Now, it does say she wants to use the fewest. Well, half foot ones, that would work because we have a half fraction here. Uh, the quarter, I believe two quarters will make a half. So quarters would work as well. But I think we'd have to use a lot more of those tiles. They're smaller. So now we can go ahead and write our understanding. So I'm going to explain in my words, and then I'm going to type something up. And as you guys know, I type super fast, so I just kind of like a genie. I'll blink it, and it'll just be there. So what I'm thinking here is definitely want the half foot by half foot tile. That's going to work with our dimensions here. And um, the reason why we can't use the one by one is we can't cut the tiles like we talked about already. 
the quarter by quarter we could use, but that would mean we'd use a lot more. And that problem does say to use the fewest tiles possible. And those are some key words right there. So let me go ahead and type this up in my super fast speed. Okay, so there you have it. Super fast, I know, huh? Lightning, Flash Gordon fast. <laughs> okay, now B says on the grid, let each square represent the dimensions of the tile you chose. And we chose the half foot by half foot. Then draw a diagram on the floor. And this is the floor, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So if we had a half foot, let's go ahead and just get our magic pen first, all right? So if we had a half foot, that means that this tile right here, and are you writing? Thank you. It's a little slide. So that right there, that square, <laughs> Ooh, thank you very much, okay, would represent a half foot by a half foot. So I'll draw it over here so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I put one half here, and then it's got one half here, just like our diagram above, modeling with mathematics. So that means if that's a half foot, we need two and a half by three and a half. Well, here's two and a half. Let's just do two and a half this way. There's a half, there's one, there's one and a half, there's two, there's two and a half. And then we can do our three and a half the other way. One half, right? One, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. And see, ultimately, this will be our diagram right there. Oh, very cool. Okay, didn't know it was going to do that. So let's go ahead and take our box, and we'll make it work somehow. Let's extend this so we can show that diagram. And you can see how that, if we count, I'm going to take my pen here and show this. So this here is on this side, we have two and a half. On this side, we have three and a half. Okay, so it says, now count the squares in your diagram. All right, well, I'm not going to count the squares. I will actually use some multiplication here. So if I have one, two, three, four, five squares going this way, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven going that way. I'm just going to use my math and say, well, five times seven is going to equal 35. 35 squares. Oh, right on. What is the area of the tile you chose? Well, in this case, we had uh, the area. Oh, this is a, so we need the area. Ooh, I almost put down, I almost quickly put down one half, but that's actually not true because area is equal to length times width. So if I had one half times one half, meaning length times width, I would actually get one quarter. So actually the area of the tile here, that area right in here is going to be one quarter. And of course, that's going to be one quarter square feet or square foot. I'm just going to put it written like this. Another way to write square feet. Now, since one, one square on your diagram represents an area of, we just figured that out, one quarter square foot, the area represented by, must be all of these here, 35 squares is, well, it's going to be 35 times one quarter. So we could multiply two and a half by three and a half, but since we know the area of one of the squares of our floor, we could actually say 35 times one quarter. Isn't that nice? Don't you just love it? Tell me you don't love it. Okay, I'm so glad you can't answer that question. And now I'll come down and do even more work down below. We have here, it says, so... Uh, or, and we're going to have 35 then, if we're taking 35 times, that's going to be 35. And because 35 times 1 is 35, I can write that as 35 uh, divided by 4. So the area of the floor written as a mixed number would then be, okay, well, let's look at that. 4 goes into 35, I'm thinking 8 times. And then we're going to have 3 left over. And then with our denominator, we just... Bring it over, right? We just bring that over like, like such. All right, cool, nice. Now we can go on to the next page. Oh, my goodness, there's an ant on my page. What are you doing on my page? Although you're kind of a cute little ant. Yes, you are. You're a cute ant. Before you go, how about a little bigote? There you go. You like mustaches? There we go, mustache. Cool. You want a little tattoo? No, just kidding. All right. Come on, Mr. Ward. Let's get serious. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to let you go. Sorry. Goodbye. Go. 
disappear. Why aren't you gone yet? Be gone. Be gone, I say. All right, I'll just take your mustache then. How do you like that? He doesn't want to go, eh? All right. I have other ways of getting rid of this little thing here. Okay, there. I got rid of his mustache, his tattoo, everything. Finally. Okay, now we're going to focus here with our other mathematical practice that we're going to be doing here. It's about attending to precision. We're going to communicate precisely to others when we speak, and you guys will be working in groups, so when you do that, this is what we do when we attend to precision, accuracy. We want to calculate accurately and efficiently. We're going to label all units that we need to, that kind of thing. All right, attend to precision. Okay, and let me see if I can make that just disappear, and it did. How nicely. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's get blue. So it is using the formula for area, which we wrote down on the other page, which was area is equal to length times width. It says write a multiplication expression that could be used to find the area of the floor. Okay, an expression. Well, one side was two and a half, so here's two and a half. The other side, the width was, well, the width was actually two and a half. The length was three and a half. I reversed them, but we know we can do that because the commutative property says we can reverse the terms, and it doesn't matter. It says an expression, so I cannot write an equal sign. I cannot do that. No, 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 Mr. Wara. Don't you dare. It's an expression. An expression does not get that. Okay. Be easy. Write an expression. Rewrite the expression with fractions greater than 1. Okay, and calculate the area. It, is it the same as what you found using the model? Okay, what are they asking? Are they asking us to take this and write this as an improper fraction? That's what I kind of think they want us to do here. Well, we know that two and a half, if we write that as a, a improper fraction or a fraction greater than one, that would be two times two here, and then we add the one up at the top, which means two halves is equal to Five halves. Now we're going to multiply that according to our formula for area. And we're going to do the same thing. Three times two is six plus one is seven. So we have seven halves. So five halves times seven halves is equal to 35 fourths. Ooh, doesn't that number look familiar? It sure does. Or this obviously as a mixed number was eight and three quarters, what we figured out before. So did it matter? Yes, this same area as the model. So it is the same. So I'll make you write that down. Write that down. <laughs> just, so it is the same as the model, all right? And I'm just going to put it dot, 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 and you need to write the whole thing. Model, it's the same. Now we come down here. How many quarter foot by quarter foot tiles would Sonia need to cover one half foot by half foot tile? You know, all I'm going to say on that one is, that is one good question. Now, do we know the answer? Okay. Well, I'm, I, I always thought I was smarter than a fifth grader, so I'm going to take this one on. Uh, I can't figure, remember the guy's name on the program. Alex, I'd like to go for... No. Because if a half, and I know half of a half is a quarter, then couldn't I just kind of do this? That's like splitting him in half. That's like saying he'd be a quarter over here, he'd be a quarter here. And then, then of course, on this side, we have the quarter and the quarter. So what we're basically saying is we would have... Four, yeah, we would have four tiles. Yes, that's that's my final answer. What would I do? I plug it in, whatever they say. Yes, Mr. Wara is smarter than a fifth grader. Woohoo! All right, coming down. This is how could you find the number of a quarter foot by quarter foot tiles needed to cover the same closet floor? I see what they're trying to say here. Because we used a half foot by a half foot tiles to cover the floor. They're asking how could we find the number if we used one quarter. Those are smaller. Well, <laughs> the problem may seem kind of tricky. But no, Alex, I'm going to go for the million dollars. Thank you very much. Because, see, I could just multiply. If this half foot here is by one half foot and there was 35 of those used to cover the floor, hello, doesn't that mean I could just say, 35 times 4? Yeah, thank you. Where's my million dollars? I'll take it. I could say I could multiply 35 of the 1 fourth 
foot tiles I have here by four. Since it takes four of these size tiles to cover one of the half foot by a half foot. Yes, that's my final answer. Let's type it in and voila. Here we go. Okay, so I described that. Now it's written down there for you. Let's look at this last one here make it about making connections. Sometimes it is easier to multiply mixed numbers if you break them apart into whole numbers and fractions. It says use an area model to solve. So let's take a look at this. It says rewrite each mixed number as the sum of a whole number and a fraction. Okay, I think I could probably do that. That would be just here, it would be just one plus three fifths. That would be the whole part plus the fraction part. Here's just two plus uh, three quarters. Okay, all right. Draw an area model to show the original multiplication problem. And that's this here. And this side's the long side. So I'll put my two and three quarters here. And I'll put my one and three fifths here. All right, so that's showing that. Now, what does step three say? Step three says, draw an area model, I'm sorry, draw dashed lines and label each section, okay, to show how you broke apart the mixed number in step one. Okay, so we could do that. Let's go ahead and bring this up here. Maybe we can bring this up here like such, like there we go. It shows dotted lines. I think I have some of those here. So if we were to break this apart, this is what we could do. And this is, my friends, an area model. We're still modeling with mathematics, my friends. And what mathematical practice is that? You would say, yeah, mathematical practice four. You guys are good. Impressive. Okay, now, I'm diving up in four pieces because this is what we have. We basically have, we have two. Okay, and plus our three quarters. Then over here, it's just one plus our three fifths here at the bottom. And this is how we can figure this out. Well, this is two times one. Two times one is equal to two. And here we have one times three quarters, which is simply just three quarters. I will write the whole thing here. See, one times three quarters is equal to three quarters. I know, I went over a little bit. Here we have two times three fifths. And that's equal to six fifths. I'll just write it as a fraction greater than one. And then of course here, three quarters times three fifths is going to equal nine twentieths. And then here's this add the area of each section to find the total area of the rectangle. So we're saying two plus three quarters plus six fifths plus nine twentieths. And that's going to equal, well we need a common denominator. Uh, it looks 20 looks really good, doesn't it? So we'll rewrite those fractions and think of three fourths is really 15 twentieths. Okay, and I'm going to put that down here. Okay, in this case we actually have 24 twentieths, so we'll write that 24 twentieths, and then we have our 9 twentieths. Now we can add all our twenties together. We have 15. Ooh, what do I see here? 39. And I see 39 plus 9, which is 48. So I have 48 twentieths plus we have a two over there. 20 twentieths, and then another 20 twentieths, another 40 twentieths. That would give us, actually, wouldn't that give us 88? Right, let me say that. Doing that right, 48, 20, that's 40. That would, that would give me 88 over 20. If you're wondering how I got that 88, I'm taking these two holes here, and I'm putting it into twentieths. So I have 20 twentieths plus another 20 twentieths. That's 40 twentieths, because 40 divided by 20 is 2. I'm adding that on. Now I can go ahead and put this in my mixed number, 20, 40, 60, 80, definitely go in there four times. You can see I'm going to have eight left over, over 20. We can put this in simplest form. I'm going to divide by four, that'll give me two, divide by four, which will give me five. So we should have an answer of four and two fifths. Yes, that is it, my friends. This video has come to a great conclusion. It's sad it's at the end, but There'll always be another video, Mr. Wara. There will. So please, live long and prosper.